And now, for the last talk of the day, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Catherine Borges. Now, Catherine is director of the International Society of Genetic Genealogy. She comes from Salida in Northern California, and she is um, a powerhouse in terms of the genetic genealogy community, working very closely with Family Tree DNA in the early days to set up projects on Family Tree DNA. Uh, so you, if you run a project on Family Tree DNA, you can uh, blame uh, Catherine and thank her profusely for all the work that she's made you do. Um, so without further ado, to talk to us about DNA Painter, please give a warm welcome to Catherine Borges. Thank you. Everybody can hear me. I uh, just want to give a quick disclaimer too. I, um, in Northern California, I live near Yosemite and we've had uh, quite a few fires this year you might have seen in the news. And I have asthma and my asthma has been horrendous ever since. So I'll try not to cough too much, but I just wanted to give you that disclaimer. And then um, I'm going to start with, this is the gentleman who invented DNA Painter. Is he in the room? Yes. Uh, could you stand up for us, please, Johnny? This is... Yeah, no pressure here. <laughs> I'm going to give a talk with the developer in the room. He, he, I probably, if we would have known you were going to be here, you should be the one giving the talk. But. No, you have to teach me how to talk. <laughs> So anyway, so that's who we have to thank for this wonderful, wonderful tool. So, and also I'd like to acknowledge too that uh, DNA Painter won the Innovation Prize at w Roots Tech in Salt Lake City this year. So, uh, when I found out about DNA Painter, one of the first things I did, and I highly, highly recommend that you also do what I did, is I did my research first on reading different types of um, blogs, articles, anything I could get my hands on to read about and do prep first on doing DNA Painter. So on the, the DNA Painter website, there's a link to Blaine's, Blaine Bettinger's uh, video. Watch the whole video. Do what, try to model what Blaine does. Read as many blog articles as you can. Read the DNA help section, DNA Painter help section if you get stuck. Definitely join the Facebook group and the, the WADA, which I'll get to at the end of my talk. And then uh, just, I think a week ago, we started an ISOG wiki page on DNA Painter. And one of the reasons is also to compile all the tools and resources on DNA Painter. So uh, this is, uh, when you go to the DNA Painter homepage, this is what you see when to click on for the Blaine video. And again, I highly recommend that you watch it. Roberta Estes also has a blog called DNA Explained, and she's written about four or five articles on DNA Painter. Again, too, if you read and do your homework first before you start doing DNA Painter, you can save yourself from making mistakes. Like the, one of the ones that Roberta mentions is that in the beginning she tried to paint her female ancestors' um, segments with gender-specific colors, so, you know, pink for females, blue for males, and then she just gunned the whole thing up. So you don't want to do that. And you, if you read these things ahead of time, then you can save yourself from these, learning those lessons the hard way. So here's our page two that we just created on the ISOG wiki. It's our DNA painter compilation. So if you just go to the ISOG wiki or isog.org forward slash wiki, and then go to DNA painter, you'll find this. And Debbie Kent and I try to do our best on keeping it updated on links every time a new blog article comes out. One of the most recent blog articles was by uh, Melody LaSalle. So I try to read everything I can on DNA Painter. This is what the homepage for the DNA Painter Facebook group looks like. So definitely, definitely want to join. One of the reasons that you want to join is because both in DNA Painter and in Watto, there's always tips being posted and then so you can learn from what other people have had successes with what other people have had mistakes with like this particular tip talks about when you find an unknown match following at the same location on a chromosome as one of your known matches then run a one-to-one -one comparison so 
you, that's one way that you will learn is reading all the tips on the Facebook. And it's a, and Johnny is the admin on there, and he answers a, a lot of the questions. So it's that is the place to go, I think, for help. So one of the great things that I utilize in DNA Painter is the ability to set up multiple profiles. So I just did this small, I'm very um, privacy conscious, so I try as much as possible, you know, to erase my cousin's names and not use, um, you know, identifying information in my talks. But so I just did a small portion of the screen. But as you can see, I have quite a few different profiles. And it, they're very easy to set up and create, and they're also very easy to delete. So I only have one that I've deleted so far, but uh, I'll get to it and tell you why that had to do with when I painted my ethnicity. And so the way you start with creating a profile is you, you click on the, the box that says create a new profile, and this is the page you get. And then, it, let's see, does this have a pointer? It tells you who is this profile for, enter a name for this profile. So what I do usually there is, if I'm looking for specific ancestors, I might put in the ancestors' names, like as you saw on this page right here, I named the profile John Bull Esquire. I named this one Catherine's, my maiden name is Bolt, so that's why there's a lot of Bolts in here. Ethnicity, this one is all Bolt DNA segments I'm painting. This one is McCallum, this is my mother's maiden name, and this is one of my ancestors. So. Depending on what goal that I'm trying to do is the way that I, I named the uh, profile. Let's see, so then uh, when you when you go and put in a cousin's match, when you're painting a cousin's match, this particular cousin, she's my second cousin once removed. So I just used her first name. Her name's also Catherine, and she's second second cousin once removed. Then I list the ancestors that we have in common, which is Lucia Samuel Bolt and Nanny Wright Fuller. This is my great-grandparents, it's her great-great-grandparents. Um, it's on our paternal side and the color I used is purple and then I put in notes down here. And again, I, the system of organization I use is from Blaine primarily is where I, I copied what Blaine was doing. So this is what my particular ancestor painting looks like right now for um, all the different lines that I painted in so far. So this is you know a lot of my ancestors on both sides of my family. And then down here is a little key that shows those. But I tend to use, currently, I use DNA Painter right now for more targeted goals. So I want to show you some of those. This is, um, and please, too, Johnny, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, if I say anything wrong. But right now, you can only paint in chromosome segments from Family Tree DNA, 23andMe, and uh, GEDmatch and my heritage. So um, this is, I, I've gone into family tree DNA and because as Morris said that I've been doing Y DNA testing for so long, I have uh, many cousins that I've tested through family tree DNA and a preponderance of bolts because one of the projects I run is bolts. So I have a lot of bolt uh, matches in there. So when you, you go to the chromosome browser and as you can see in the background, this is the family tree DNA's chromosome browser. This is actually the old, now old style chromosome browser because they just changed it, which is not what you want right before you're going to give a speech. Let me tell you, I'm in my hotel today because it was Andy that let me know that they had changed it. And I'm putting in new slides, fixing everything since they just changed it. And I found some bugs. So <laughs> anyways, you caught, you highlight the um, chromosome, the segment information here is so easy. All you have to do is highlight and click copy, <clears throat> excuse me, and then and paste. And so this is in the family tree DNA. This is what the new chromosome browser tab looks like. And this is actually, um, again, too, as I was mentioning, I do a lot of targeted goals in what I'm trying to find out with my ancestors. So this particular example that I'm showing you is back to that same cousin, Catherine, the second cousin once removed, and incidentally, too, she, she was adopted. So she was able to find uh, who her real birth parents were through using uh, family tree DNA. And then later she found her father through ancestry. But what I wanted to show you here, too, is so she's my second cousin once removed. This M.G. Wallace is my first cousin once removed. And um, I like to look at the different segments of where uh, patterns of inheritance that we have. Like, say, for instance, on 
chromosome 11, I have a longer segment of chromosome 11 in common with MG than I do with CAT. So that's one of the things that I use DNA Painter for. And then um, uh, because I find it interesting how um, these different segments get inherited. So for instance, now this is a comparison with MG and CAT, but now we have S, and S is MG's brother. So it's when I added him, so like again on chromosome 11, here's, here's cat, and then here's um, S, and they have this segment in common, and then, wait, that's 13, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one, 11's right here. So cat, uh, I have this segment in common with MG and with cat, but I don't have it in common with S. So that's another area that I look at to try to see how much DNA I have in common because you know siblings inherit DNA differently. On this chromosome five, uh, I have less in common with S than I do with MG. So it's you know they're brothers, and then even this one's a slightly shorter on S. It's just random the way it happens. So I'm gonna give you an example of how um, I was a very early adopter of autosomal DNA and and you trying to use segments to find long-lost um, relatives, cousins, ancestors. So this is a Bible record that surfaced in 2003. A 90-something-year-old lady in Seneca, South Carolina had got up into her attic and found this Bible record. And we actually had the DNA match on one DNA right before the Bible record was found. But what was interesting for us with this Bible record is there's people listed in this Bible record that we did not know who they were. We've never heard of them before didn't know who they were, and one of them is this Frankie Bolt. So here's the common ancestor, Robert Bolt Sr., born 1710. My ancestor is Robert Bolt Jr., born 1762, and here's this Frankie, born 1757. So when this record was found, we're like, who is Frankie? What happened to Frankie? Is Frankie a male or a female? We didn't know. So... Uh, but we got the, uh, this was in 2003, by 2009 when autosomal testing came in, was introduced by 23andMe, we got a, our answer. So I uh, found out in 2009, a Deering descendant contacted me and said that Frankie was a woman and that Frankie had married his ancestor, William Deering. And they, these Deerings that know all about us, but in 200 years, they didn't ever happen to mention and let any Bolts know that they knew about us. There's supposedly also a Deering Bible record. I still haven't seen it yet, so hopefully maybe someday we'll get to see this Deering Bible record that matches Frankie. So the question that I had was, does, do the Deering, does this Frankie Bolt, via the Deerings, will their DNA match ours? Now... Here's what I did, because this is all we had back then. I gotta give you this big caveat because it's almost like committing a sin when you have DNA segments this low. This is below seven centimorgans. And in the genetic genealogy community, there's a, a lot of debate about the, with the seven centimorgans. There's some people out there that think less than seven centimorgans are valid, and it's I call it the small segment war is what I call it. So I'm not taking sides in the small segment war, but I also don't throw the baby out of the bathwater. So what we have here is a gentleman named Jim McMillan had established a spreadsheet back in 2009, and you could submit small segments to Jim McMillan. So what I, I did that with Roger Deering's DNA. Um, all of these people would be six cousins to each other. So and from different lines of Robert Bolt Sr. So she's from the oldest son, John. He is from Abraham, and this is from my brother. So in theory, these people shouldn't have any matches at all if they weren't related, but the segments are too small to definitively answer that question. So I need something more, and thanks to Johnny Pearl, I got it. <laughs> so, um, so here's what I did, and let me tell you how I did this, and I just think it's amazing, and this is going to be a tool that I can use also to find more Bolt descendants, but there, it's tricky and there's a key to it. So what I did using DNA Painter was, here we have the common ancestors, Robert Bolt Sr., born 1710, Elizabeth is born 1722, we don't know her maiden name yet, we may get there eventually, but what I did was I went through and I started mapping 
his DNA, his, all the segments that were in common from each of his children. So all of his children that survived, I was able to find segments that were over seven centimorgans because in DNA Painter, you can't map less than that. It has to be seven centimorgans. Now, let me tell you the key to doing this and how I did it. Okay, one, I have tested a lot of bolts, not only on the Y chromosome, but also on Family Finder tests. Two, I try to test the oldest generation. Having the oldest generation really, really helps because most of the time they are one generation closer to the ancestor than, you know, say I am. So some of these, these people that are up here, they're deceased now. One of them was my cousin who was born in 1920. But one thing that was very helpful for my family is that uh, we have long generation links. Long generation links are helpful on a DNA perspective like this, but they're bad to get to know your grandparents. Because, like, my grandfather died when I was four years old, and my grandfather was born in 1894. So, <coughs> excuse me, asthma. Anyways, back to this. So I was able to find children from each one of Robert Bolt Sr.'s, uh, all the children that we know that survived. Now, he had a son named James, but we don't know of any known descendants of James. So maybe James didn't have any, uh, maybe he didn't survive, maybe his, his descendants didn't survive, but we've not found anyone from the James line yet. But we were able to find from the oldest son, John, born 1750, Mary, 1744, Sarah, I think she's 1752, and Frankie, of course. So here's how I did it, because I don't have my cousin's names on here. Now, one of the things that I used in a tool was I went into family tree DNA and I went into matches and I would look specifically and search the database for bolt matches and then if I didn't find, you know, if it didn't narrow it down enough, here's what I did. I searched by say the wife's or the whoever the wife married. So with the Mary match, I searched for Gerard or Gerard, it's um, G-A-R-R-A-D. It's almost close to Jared's name. <laughs> but I searched for uh, Gerard because she married a Gerard, and that's how I, I found that one. This is a person I didn't know. I just found them by searching the database. I did the same thing, too, with, um, let's see, which one was it? The Sarah descendant? No, the Sarah descendant I knew. Um, it it might have been the, the Frankie descendant. Now, I could not find a match between Roger and, say, my generation, but I could with the older generation. So that was the other key, and it's random, again, too. And having these profiles in the Bolt DNA project was very helpful because then that helped me with my searching. So eventually, I think that I will keep being able to match these. And something else I want to point out, too, it's really interesting on the patterns when you're looking at this of inheritance from the chromosome. So like for instance, Mary born 1744 and Abraham born 1764, they both have this exact same segment on chromosome one that they inherited. So these are six cousins to each other, but they're inheriting the same segment. So that's probably where the gene for stubbornness is, I'm guessing, <laughs> <laughs> because we're very stubborn, us cults are. But I'm, I'm just kidding, but seriously though, it's really interesting to see an overlap like this on chromosome one between six cousins that have the exact same segment that's being passed down. I mean, I've even seen segments, <clears throat> excuse me, from a great, great grandparent where a whole chromosome was inherited by a great, great grandchild. So, and, and the person that this happened to, I told them about DNA painter. I said, you need to use DNA pages to make your life a lot easier. So. One of the things that you can also do in DNA Painter is you can paint in your ancestry. And you can only do that from 23andMe, correct? Yeah. <laughs> and I, so I did mine from 23andMe. However, when I first painted it, I painted it into that very first slide you saw that had all my ancestors. And I went, ah! <laughs> because it did this. It went all one color and it colored the whole thing. And look how boring I am. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just European. It's not, you know, defined yet by the different groups. So it just, I'm just all pink, all European. So I decided that what I'm going to do is leave that alone for now until perhaps, you know, it changes or, you know, every so often I can go in 
and repaint from 23andMe when they do uh, database updates and see if it changes at all because right now that's not going to help me that much. But where it can help people is if you have something that's not like this, 100% European. So my son has Native American DNA and he really does and it's quite a big chunk. So, you know, not this whole thing you know, that you mentioned earlier like Elizabeth Warren. It shows up in all the databases. So he's, he's, he's got Native American DNA, so where that could help me with DNA Painter is if I find a cousin that might be related to him on that line, then I could paint in his ethnicity match. I just haven't gotten around to it yet because I'm a little selfish working on my lines. So this is my Irish ancestry. So I thought I'd put it up here. If anybody knows any Powells or Englishes from Limerick, Bounty Landers, I'd be happy to pay for a test for them. I would do Family Finder and Y. McCallum, they're from Tyrone, I'd be happy to do a Y-DNA. Lynch from Cabin, Family Finder, and Kennedy, I would be happy to do a Y-DNA and a Family Finder too from County Tipperary. So um, these are the lines that I'm researching of my Irish ancestry. This is my grandmother right here, a little cutie cherub that when after they left Ireland, they settled in Chicago, that's where it was taken. And this is, she married a McCallum, and this is the McCallum family crest. So this is my, uh, on my maternal, my direct female line, uh, mitochondrial line. This is my mitochondrial line, so this is my grandmother, this is her mother, Cora, this is her mother, Johanna, and this is the registry for the famine ship that left uh, Cork on June 2nd, 1848, that carried her mother, Julia English. Now, when I did a mitochondrial test, I was not expecting, I can tell you it was quite a surprise, I was not expecting that our DNA would be haplogroup N1B1B, which at the time I first tested it was only N, and then it became N1B, but either way, here's the thing, N is not indigenous to Ireland. The minute I saw that, I knew that I was looking at non-Irish DNA. It wasn't an H, it wasn't an I, a J, all these other letters, it was an N. So. I don't know how it end, ended up in Ireland. All I can do is have a hypothesis because you know the records are gone. But so here's my hypothesis is that my long ago female line ancestor went into England during uh, the Roman occupation, then went into Ireland during Cromwell. The Ballylanders means place of the Londoners. Their surname is English. <laughs> English is not an Irish surname. It's found here a lot. Like there's a famous um, sailing guy down in Cork that's surnamed English, but it's not an Irish surname. So um, the other thing that gave me the clue about the Romans is all of my matches are in Italy. So again, that's why I'm thinking that they came over with the Romans, but it's just a hypothesis. I don't have anything else. Now, that begs the question, am I less Irish because I'm an N? I'm a clearly not indigenous to Ireland. But I think the, the answer is it's, it's up to you. You just take the information you have, whether it's DNA, whether it's what your family has told you, and you decide whether you want to incorporate that into your identity or not. As far as I'm concerned, my ancestors self-identified as Irish. I'm part Irish. They settled in Irish... Uh, Catholic section of Chicago. My mother always said, you're Irish, that's why you like potatoes. So to me, I'm Irish, even if I have this clearly non-indigenous, you know, Irish DNA. But that doesn't mean that all of my DNA is not Irish. Like definitely the Kennedy was, that was from Tipperary, he was in Emmett's Rebellion. So uh, with the rebellious DNA, I can clearly say I have that. So uh, DNA Painter, so here's what I'm doing now with DNA Painter. I am looking for the Irish DNA in me because I don't have it from my mitochondrial, clearly. So I set up a new profile under Irish DNA. I put the person as female, which it could possibly come from both sides, just depends what side I'm focusing on. But I just put female for the sake of, you know, because it's my uh, maternal line. This is what it looks like now in FDNA's, uh, when you paste the segment. So you just highlight this and go down to copy and paste under detailed segment data. Thankfully, Johnny's already upgrade, updated the DNA Painter program so that it, it works because when it, they first changed it, it didn't work. And I know that because it was on Facebook in the group. So then I copy that and then I paste it into here. 
So the data gets pasted into this box. And then I decide how I'm going to label it. So I chose PAL because we're going to be looking at ones from my PAL line, which is also from Limerick. I, I hyphenate the ancestor's name as PAL English. Maternal, and interestingly enough, the default color was green. How convenient for my Irish side. Yes, it was like it knew. So, <laughs> so this is what you get when I paint in my PAL match. So I have one cousin that's a PAL. She actually lives in America. As Cindy Wood pronounces it, it's POL, but, um, or, well, we say PAL, but um, they settled uh, after the, the family, Julie English married Giles PAL. Now, the, late, the cousin that I match is descended from a PAL who also married the English. So if the two English girls were sisters, which we think they are, but we don't have any proof, then uh, we're going to have more DNA in common than we would if we only shared the Powell ancestor. So these are the two areas of, on our DNA where we have this uh, Powell's possibly slash English DNA in common. So then next what I did, this is my family tree DNA matches list. This is my cousin that's the, from the Powell. And then um, I went to compare another uh, person looking for the Powell surname and um, also with my aunt. So M. McCallum is my aunt who's done a family finder test because I figured too she'd have more DNA in common. So that's why I ran the comparison. So, and then this is uh, on the, what it looks like now on the new chromosome browser. So I've got, again, my pal cousin here, my aunt here, checked her in the box. Then you click compare and this is what I got. So this particular one is, um, oh, I, didn't, I left it at five centimorgans. I did try on the other slides to go to seven centimorgans because you know that goes, but anyway, so I painted the, this particular one, uh, my McCallum line red because it, it's Scottish, Scottish in quotes, um, from an Irish famine immigrant that went to Scotland. That's why I say it like that. And then uh, these ones again too are Alice. So I was looking for overlap and the only overlap I found was just this little tiny smidgen right here. It is so small that I had a dickens of a time trying to get it into DNA Painter. Like the system kept rejecting it at first. So, um, but I was finally able to do it using, I think on my aunt's account. So this is um, the marriage registry from my Thomas McCallum who married Rosie Lynch. And they were married in Schatz in Lanarkshire, Scotland in 1852. Um, the, the census says that he was from uh, Tyrone and she was from Cavan. So I'm looking for lynches now. I'm on the road for lynches. So I do a search in Family Tree DNA of matches. And I find, this is completely unknown to me, just so you know. I don't know this person or how we're related but I find that they have a Lynch ancestor, Andy Lynch. And the only ancestral names we have in common is Lynch. We do not have McCallum in common with this particular person. So up here, uh, this first one, the light blue, is the uh, my mother's, or my aunt, and then the first to third cousin is the, uh, I guess that's teal. It looks so close to blue, it's kind of hard to see. And the second to fourth is the, um, the red. So this is the Lynch match. And mind you, again, this doesn't show um, up on mine. It shows on my aunt's because um, this, my aunt is one generation closer to the ancestor. So she's more likely to have matches. Now, that's not to say I don't ever get those random matches come through. I do. It's just easier when you use the older generation. So this one for me, it, this is interesting because up here on chromosome one, there's no overlap. But down here on chromosome nine, there is overlap. So this, is, this could be our common Lynch ancestor right here. But she, the Annie Lynch is not back any farther than my Rosie Lynch, so we're still kind of stuck on Lynch. But again, this is how you sort it out. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So my mother's maiden name back to is McCallum. And I started the McCallum Y DNA project in 2006. It's kind of like the Field of Dreams movie. If you build it, they will come. I was completely brick walled on my McCallum line to be able to test a male McCallum in America because they had all daughtered out. They had all died out on the North American continent. 
How, so I started the McCallum project, and then we started having McCallums joining. And then here at uh, group four and five, what's interesting is with a, in Scotland, it's called a clan name. In Ireland, they call them seps, as I have been corrected by someone that's here at the conference. So <laughs> um, they would take a name as a protector. So of course, they're not all going to be related. But the, it's interesting to see the variants of the surnames. Like this one's McCollum, this one's Malcolm. This is McCollum with a U, and they all match each other. Of course, they've got the, the highlighted uh, boxes are where they have mutations from each other, but the, they all do share a common ancestor. This group shares a common ancestor. So I started that project, and what was great was when I tested the, I finally found a McCallum cousin to test. He's a second cousin that's removed to me that lives in Scotland. And I did a Y chromosome test on him and a family finder. And that's who you saw when I was doing the McCallum matching. But um, I was able to also see immediately which group he fell into because the project already existed. So what was interesting is our line was the only Irish line in the whole project. Everybody else was Scottish. So what that tells me is that he's Scottish too, but how did he get to Ireland? Was it Ulster Plantation? That's, again, probably the hypothesis. And then he returned to Scotland during the famine. So this is an instance too where I'm using Y-DNA, it benefits me, but also then I turn to the autosomal. Because clearly, I don't have the McCallum surname. I can't see McCallum DNA in any of my relatives in North America in a Y chromosome. I have to have autosomal DNA. And the thing with DNA Painter is that you can bring in the DNA from all the other companies. You're not stuck or tied to just using one company. So uh, Family Tree DNA offers free autosomal transfers. And then if you want to unlock the chromosome browser, it's only $19. And um, I, I, you know, I kind of get this phantom slide thing. I did have a slide showing DNA, uh, my heritage because my heritage is having free uploads until the 1st of December. And then after that, they're gonna charge. So if you wanna get into their database, do it before the 1st of December. But that slide disappeared. So what I wanted to show you too is that a new DNA pager tool has come out. What are the odds? But guess what? I'm not gonna talk about it because Andrew Millard is. <laughs> so, so I have here, uh, oh, I did put it in there. I just found the wrong page. So join the, what, the Watto, Facebook page also because there's always tips being posted um, nearly almost every day. Here's the My Heritage upload page. I just reversed in my slides. And this is about uh, Andrew's lecture coming up on Sunday, and he's going to go over what are the odds, Watto, as we call it. So, and there's all kinds of new tools coming out with DNA Painter. You know, I had gone when autosomal testing first came out, I went to the DNA companies and I asked them to implement tools that would give us the ability to face. And I asked 23andMe, I asked Family Tree DNA, um, and they said the problem with that request is that it's very expensive, what you're asking. It takes a lot of computer database processing, it's very expensive to do. And I started out doing phasing with Tim Jansen's method using an Excel spreadsheet, which is very, very labor intensive. I don't have enough days in my life to keep doing it like that. So I was so excited when this tool came out with DNA Painter because it is so, so easy to use. And I highly recommend, you know, do your homework first, download DNA Painter. It's free to use. If you want to use the, uh, he's coming out with more advanced tools and I, the subscription's $45. I signed up right away. So um, for that, because it is, I mean, it's just the next best thing since sliced bread. So anyways, I think I'm almost through. Um, this is the lecture uh, schedule up here. I thank Morris Gleason, Jared Corcoran, all the ISOG volunteers and speakers. And of course, big thank you again to Johnny Pearl for DNA Painter. And if you'd like to get a transfer flyer or to test your family tree DNA, their stand is at B20, B25 downstairs. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. I, I'd be happy to answer any questions, but some you might need to direct to Johnny. I don't know <laughs> I know as much as he does. It's great to have such a, a collection of intellectual uh, people in the room that can answer those questions. So uh, has anybody in the room used DNA Painter? 
That's okay, quite, quite a, a few, few people. So there's about 20 people that have actually used DNA Painter. Um, any questions? Has anybody found any major, uh, had success stories with DNA Painter? Me. Okay, <laughs> Catherine, Donna, you've had, you've had a success? Yeah, I've got a, a mystery match on my uh, mum's side, a close match, and we think we've narrowed it down to um, where it might be, but we've used DNA Painter to try and sort that out because I didn't know if it was on her paternal or maternal side, but because I could tell who they were matching in with, and I've already worked out which side they were, by putting it all in DNA Painter, I could rule out that it wasn't um, her paternal side because he, they didn't match the paternal side. But having it all there in DNA Painter has made the research a lot easier because I can clearly see where this mystery man sits mm -hmm. and all the other people that match him. From all the companies, like, like Catherine said, you can bring in all your matches from the other companies and you've got them all in one place and you can visually see what you're going to research. So, yeah, great. Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> It'd be great to be able to transfer ancestry data across, but there's no way that you can do that apart from getting to upload to JetMatch and then take the JetMatch data. Or family tree DNA, or my heritage. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. You have to do a workaround, you don't have a choice. Yeah, and there are workarounds available, which is the good news. Yes. Jared, did you have a question? I believe the N will be will be. I, I believe that's Ashkenazi Jewish, I think. Well, it's. <laughs> So I also re I run the Apple Group N project at Family Tree DNA to research N because it's so rare. Yeah. And so it has gone from, it started out being Jewish to not Jewish, now I think it's maybe Jewish. That's right, yeah. So, so one of my friends, yeah. he's done the definitive list of all of the Jewish people who have ever lived in Ireland. It's an amazing uh, book, but anyway, it's available. And your thing, I, I do have a Kennedy grandmother from Tipperary, so... Uh, Lots of candidates there. Do you, do you have a male relative? I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I will pay for it. <laughs> Great. Any other questions for, for Catherine? Fine. Well, it just remains for me to say thank you very, very much to you. Thank you very much to the audience for attending all day today. Uh, we are all start at 11.30 tomorrow. We have another day of cracking DNA lectures for you. Uh, so until then, can I just ask you to give a warm round of applause for Catherine Borges. Thank you very much. Did you want to say something, Dick? Let me just come down to you. I just wanted to know that uh, Kennedy Contemporary, who was on our uh, committee for the Gleason Gallery, uh, from Tipperary, uh, he's tested great, with great, family tree DNA, so great, great she doesn't already have a member in Edinburgh. Really? Yes. So we might so have something you, for you, Catherine. If you actually match up on his horse or something at all, uh, you might be able to find out a little bit yeah. more. Yeah, I mean, what was his name? Um, I, you, you'd be on a, you, your email will be on the ticket. Yeah. yeah, I'll send you. Okay, sounds good. She's got a Kennedy from Tipperary ancestor. Yes, and um, Dick was just saying that there's a, a Kennedy that we know that we could put you in touch with. Oh, good.